Now here's a great one. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives unto the death. Now I've dealt in, now I have several of these stories in my book on faith of casting out devils. You'll, you'll, you'll love it. <laughs> Some of it's funny even. And I, I haven't counted them, but probably 30 or 40 experiences of casting out devils. And it's not this modern, silly, charismatic type stuff where they cast out fear and, and lust and greed and stuff out of Christians. That's make-believe. That's just so you can have a happy, uh, hilarious time at your church services. Now, I'm talking about real devil possession, just exactly like described in the Bible where people will speak to you. A woman will speak in a man's voice without her mouth moving, voice coming out of her throat where people go into routines like a Benny Hinn meeting where they pretend to be cats or dogs, like the, uh, what was it, Pensacola Revival down there and the Toronto Revival, so-called, where people get the gifts of epilepsy and they, and they begin to shake and vibrate and their tongue darts in and out of their mouth and they do crazy stuff. I mean, stuff like that. And then the devil's talking to you, giving you their names out of the bodies, taking knives, trying to kill you, trying to threaten you with them. Uh, uh, drawing their blood before I get there and writing their incantations on the wall and how to conjure up uh, Satan. Uh, and more and more, uh, all kinds of things like that. It said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, I said all that to say this, that the blood of Christ is powerful where the Satan is concerned. I remember one time uh, a fella came into my office, a military guy, and uh, he had uh, heard the gospel for the first time a week earlier and made uh, an attempt to, to be saved. And he came into my office and he said, I, I've had the worst week in my life. He said, since I asked Jesus to save me, I've never had anything so bad happen to me as happened this week. He said, it's just terrible. And he's like accusing me, blaming me uh, for the bad things that were happening to him and uh, torment in his soul. And so I opened the Bible to this passage right here, Revelation 12, 11. I was sitting at my desk in my office in church, and I, I shoved the Bible across the table, turned around, and I said, read that. And he picked the Bible up and started to read it, and when he did, he freaked. His eyes began to vibrate back and forth, left and right, so fast that I couldn't see the pupils. Looked like a, you know, a fan turns and you can't see the blades of the fan. And he really freaked out and he said, I can't see, I can't see. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ and his shed blood, I command you to stop Satan. And immediately his eyes cleared up. I said, now read it. He read it. I said, read it out loud. He read it out loud. I said, what does that say? It said they overcame Satan by the b -b -b blood of the lamb. I said, say it again. And so they overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb. I said, why the blood of the lamb? Because he died for me. All right, I want you to renounce Satan right now. Tell him to get out of your life, leave your body, leave your mind, never come back. You're God's child. He did. He was free then and forever. You know, that's a lot of fun. I always start laughing when I get in those situations. I laugh because Satan is so weak when confronted with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So for that reason, I'm going to sing there's power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Uh, something that the world despises, finds offensive. Most churches never talk about it. <laughs> but there's still power in the blood of the Lamb. 